I don't see Braun going out in that first round. You know what my body told me when I was 40, when I turned 40 on my 40th birthday? Mm -hmm. Don't you start tripping. <laughs> <laughs>
So I've seen Cam in person before, but like to actually like see him being an athlete, like I'm, I was thoroughly impressed. But uh, you know, I I'm sizing him up. I'm like, damn, bro, like how much do you weigh? He was like, bro, to be honest, <laughs> no. He when was he like, was bro, to be honest, t- bro, to be honest, in the Super Bowl, I weighed two eighty. Damn. damn. Six, he, he carries six, it well. You would have, you would have never bro. guessed it. It's not an Carry ounce of fat well. on this dude, bro. With speed, too. 280 at quarterback, brother. That's nasty. So, nah, I was I was thoroughly impressed. And, you know, him, he, he he actually, you know, really, really tried to compete. And I could feel the strength. His size definitely worked on, 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 in his behalf, on his behalf. But, uh, yeah, it just wasn't enough. They said you was out there like Shaq with a three-point ball. <laughs> I shot a lot of jumpers, bro. You know, I, I didn't want to go too hard because, you know, it's, it's, it's levels to this shit. So I wanted to keep it, you know, entertaining. I want everybody to have fun. But, yeah, you, you know what happens. When, when, it's time to, <laughs> when it's time to strap up, bro, it's time to strap up. So. Yeah. Time to strap right, up. I, so you only, what, 32, 33? How old are you? I'm 33, bro. Oh, you still a baby. You're still a baby. <laughs> you know what's crazy though is like me and Paul started playing again. We, we, we you know, we we trained together and we started playing. But shit, I'm seven. I'm seven years removed. I, Paul's probably are you 10, nasty? Maybe. Uh, I'm actually starting to warm up a little bit. I was nasty the first couple of times. I was really just out there <laughs> on, on some cardio ball, just running up and down. Even if we lost, I'm on the side running just to run. But. It's crazy because Boogie's still in real <coughs> basketball shape, right? You know what I mean. So there's a big difference between hey, I used to play, and I'm still kind of, I'm, I'm Absolutely. still in it. It's it's night and day. I think I think that's what kind of caught Paul off because I like coming in. I think Paul thought in his mind like this this is gonna be easy. I'm playing against you know these these young mm-hmm. guys, and then Paul realized how these dudes was running around, and I think he just kind of got shocked in the moment. <laughs> yeah, we could. Was, we could. Bro, he he was stuck yeah. in the mud, bro. It was it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. To yeah, see Sh- shout out <laughs> P Square. <laughs> Before we get to some ABA topics, uh Boogie, obviously your former alma mater. Uh, a lot has transpired since we last talked to you. Coach Cal is out. Uh former captain of the 1996 Untouchable National Championship team, Mark Pope is in. I was actually read an article last night about some political infiltration in the Kentucky system and how they wanted Cal to get on that political train and he wasn't having none of it. So, uh, Boogie, talk to us. Cal's in Arkansas now. Mark Pope is in. Um, What are your thoughts? Man, uh, you kind of hit it on the head with that, Matt. It is a lot of, you know, political behind the scene things going on that, you know, the average fan will never know about. And, uh, you know, for the most part, players won't really know about unless, you know, they're able to get that information from the horse's mouth. But uh, it's a lot of things that happen, you know, that, you know, I'm not happy with. But uh, at the end of the day, um, I think it's best for both sides. Uh, Obviously, once the politics get involved, it's going to become a really, really messy situation and and everybody Mm -hmm. in the situation becomes a loser. So uh, and when we, said, real quick, not to cut you off, but real quick, but because when we say politics, normally there's politics to college basketball. Politics. We're talking real politics, real politics. Like yeah. we're talking real, real, real politics. Like they wanted they wanted Cal to jump on this this Trump train and 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 support someone who's in in his cabinet who was running for governor. So there was a lot of hands in the pot. And, and, and to me, from what I read, Cal wanted to protect his players at all costs. He wouldn't allow his players to be involved in it, and he didn't want himself involved in it. And once they kind of put his foot down with that. As powerful as these outside entities are, as great as Cal is, that mm-hmm. was almost kind of like the sign of okay, it's not, something's something's got to change here. I mean, yeah, you, you you're definitely you're definitely on the right path when it comes to you know the behind the scenes actions, and you know I, I'm not really comfortable speaking on it too much because I don't even want to get involved with that type I of bullshit. That. Like I respect that. Um, you know, I'm not a guy that's into politics. I don't want to be politics are always messy. It's always a loser in politics. So. Like I said, I don't want nothing to do with that shit, but, and I really don't want to speak on it, but I do know the truth. I do know the ugliness of what happened behind the scenes. And like I said, at the end of the day, everybody loses in this situation. So Mm -hmm. them going their separate ways was the best way to move in a positive direction. I think, I think Kyle is going to, you know, go off and be Kyle, uh, I don't think that'll ever change Kyle's impact on basketball, this young generation, these young kids' lives. Mm-hmm. It'll never change. That's just who Kyle is. That's that's mm-hmm. his calling. That's that's what makes him the legend and the icon that he is. 
And when it goes to UK, it's the same thing. It's a legendary spot. It's a legendary university. I'm, I don't know much about Mark Pope. Um, you know, 1996, I was six years old. So I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. <laughs> I don't know much about him. Um, but I do know right. he's UK family, and I'm always support family. You know what I mean? I wish him the best. Mm -hmm. I, I wish him nothing but success. I wish the university success. But when you really think about the situation and the guys that are kind of stuck in between, it, it's almost like a child in a nasty divorce. He loves both parents. Mm -hmm. he, he loves both his parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, the child is the one that kind of ends up getting the bad end of the stick. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a tough situation. I'm definitely, like, stuck in the middle because I got love for both sides. But, uh, you know, I wish both sides success. And uh, I just hope everything can now move in a positive direction. One thing I do know about Mark Pope is he was on that team when I was at Oak Hill and we scrimmaged uh, UK when I was in the, when I was a senior. We beat them niggas. So I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you got to bring that up. One thing that's uh, fresh off the press is, uh, you know, five-star recruit DJ <coughs> Wagner has jumped in the transfer portal. It's going to be interesting to, uh, for me, Boogie, on the outside looking in, because obviously UCLA has had kind of had a coaching marathon where they haven't been able to get the kids they should be able to get. I think it's going to take UK a minute to recover from this. I don't think kids are just going to jump to Kentucky because to me, obviously you always want to think the university is bigger than the coach, but this particular instance as many great players. He's turned out Cal was Kentucky, you know, coach Cal was Kentucky. So I think it's going to take them a minute to kind of find their right way and find the money you need to get these kids because you know that, Arkansas is, they, they already said the Tyson family is throwing, what, $5 million towards NIL. So, you know, they're going to be able to get some of the top kids. And, and I think Cal's going to fit in seamless over there. I just, I just, I don't think, you know, as a basketball fan and, you know, K Kentucky's legendary all the way back, you know, to the 30. So mm -hmm. it's a tradition there where, you know what I'm saying? The name on the front of the jersey is what, you know, it's all about. But that's from a standard of back in the day, like, Kids you don't have care to, about that you, no more, unfortunately. Kids just don't care about that anymore. Kids are literally <laughs> going wherever they can get the money, wherever it's the coolest, wherever it's the hot. Gear. It's just it, it's a different era mm -hmm. of basketball. These, these kids that are growing up don't have the same standards and, 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 and ambition and goal and drive as we did when we were younger coming up. It's just a different time. And mm -hmm. life evolves, the game evolves, everything evolves, and you have to evolve with time or you're going to get left behind. Right. I, I've made comments about it before, and it's kind of been taken as, you know, I'm disrespecting the university. No, not at that's all. That's not my purpose, and that's not my intentions, mm -hmm. and that's not what I mean by it. No. I'm only speaking on the current time and how times have changed. And if you're not aware of that or you're not going to embrace the change, then you're going to get left behind. Yep. And it's simple as that. There's no knock to the university. It's legendary. If it stopped today, it's still going to be a legendary university. But at the end of the day, if you want to continue – to find success in this program, you want to continue to, you know, strive for greatness, add more banners. You have to evolve with time and you have to embrace mm -hmm. the evolution of time and, and, and in the game. Mm -hmm. And that's all my comments were really about. So, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of people took it as disrespect when I said Kentucky won't be on TV. Look, man, I, I understand both sides of this shit. I can be a it's fan a and it's I understand truth. the business. I understand the yeah. business of basketball. I understand the business of media. The only way – I don't think it's a wrap. I just don't think it'll ever be the same when it comes to the hype, the it's media, and, and the push. It's take of, a while. You know, being a nationally televised yeah. team. Will they yeah. find success? I absolutely think so. It just the one and done era be over there the is gone. The one and done era is over with. And I think they're okay with that. I think they're, they want a different College you know, standard. Yeah. They want a different change. But all I'm mm -hmm. saying is you have to be – up to date with what's going on in the night. Well, I think you you hit the key, Boog, and it's not only Kentucky, it's all these major universities that have a historical tradition, such as UCLA, that think the kids care about the four letters across the chest or the Kentucky across the chest or these big pro yes. the kids don't care about that shit at all. Kids don't even, with all due respect, don't even know what John Wooden meant to UCLA. They don't even know days. who John Wooden is. Thank you. So all these older schools that have decision makers who are a little bit ripe. Uh, a little bit older that don't understand that kids do not care about history. They don't care about tradition. All they care about is where can I get a lot of money at? Yes. What coach is going to prepare me to get at, in and out of this program in a year or two at most? And, what and where can I play the most? Play most and dope gear. 
Yep. Dope gear. We got dope some dope gear, gear while sure. I'm going to be here a year or two. I'm going to get some bread. A coach is going to get me in and out of this program. So, again, to your point, Boogie, they do want that change. They don't – because if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken, I think if you give a kid a scholarship and he leaves after one year, that money's still gone for four, if I'm not mistaken. Someone I don't, maybe I don't in, know how that in works. Our, so in I our background, produce it. But I know colleges do not like that. Uh, Cal made that acceptable and okay and, and, and you know, won a championship with it and, and turned a lot of NBA pros out. But – Schools don't necessarily like that. So I do think, again, I, I think Kentucky will get back on their feet, but it's going to take a while. But I think you, the, the realest shit you said is kids don't care about history or tradition anymore, period. Just don't. That's the that's that's the facts behind it. They just don't. <sighs> yep. yep. Moving on, transitioning to the NBA. Uh, the regular season is over. Play-in start tomorrow. Uh, really excited about this, but we're going to touch on something we all know was, was a part of the game when we were coming up, the Cavs. Bench their uh, starters, I think, in the fourth quarter last night against the Hornets to intentionally get out of that second seed. Uh, so now that they're going to put them in the four seed, they'll play Orlando instead of playing the winner of Miami Philly. Thoughts? People don't know this shit's been going on for a long time. I mean, I'm, Jack, I remember our We Believe team, I, I think Dallas tried to dodge us. Remember, they didn't play their starters at the end. And it ended up coming back and biting them in the ass. And, and you know, it, it, it's a long line of teams that have kind of been able to strategically seed themselves for their first round matchups. Uh, thoughts on this and thoughts on what, you know, what the Cavs did to avoid Miami or Philly? I mean, you just, uh, I mean, basically you just avoided Miami or Philly to have somebody else beat you in the first round. That's all you did. <laughs> you, it, it, it ain't like you, you, you trying to uh, play somebody in, in, in different that, that you know you can beat to advance. You're going to lose anyway. I don't, I don't like the losing mentality. I don't. I mean, you already in the playoffs. That's going into the playoffs with a with a bad feeling, a bad mentality. With just saying, I'm gonna rest my guys so we can play certain guys. And what they're saying, what they're saying about your coach, I ain't confident against you. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't confident with y'all playing against these motherfuckers. See, I don't like that. It says a lot of things. People can say it's strategic, and you got to do this, not it. I, I never was a guy that appreciated tanking. I, if, if we gonna have a bad season, we gonna go out on our we gonna go out on our shield having a bad season, not just laying down. That's how I always been, and I've been on bad teams. But what people can say about when I'm on bad teams, I'm still playing 110 percent like I'm on a championship team. So I can never respect that, Madden Boogie. I can never respect that. I agree with Stack. Um, it's definitely a soft mentality, especially going into the playoffs. Um, going into the playoffs, you want your confidence high. You want you want your ego in front. You want you want all these things showing that I'm ready for this moment. I'm I'm here to dominate. So that's definitely not what you know. This type of move definitely doesn't show that. Is 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 showing that there is a fear that we're not good enough, which is a horrible mentality. And um, I don't know. It's just a bad look. But in a way, you can sit here and say it's strategic because when mm -hmm. you look at these standings, Miami is Miami will always be long as Jimmy Butler and Bam. It's on that squad. Miami will always be the most dangerous team once it comes to the playoffs. That's just the facts. Simple. So I, I know every team in the East is uh, shit. I believe every team in the East is thinking this way, maybe outside of Boston. Especially at Terry Rozier. Absolutely. But I think every team in the East is thinking that way because Miami, this is their time of year, and we all know That's that. what they do. That's what they do. Once it comes to, you know, Philly and 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 and, and, and Embiid, I think the Cavs know it's no chance. With that thin, you know, front court they have, and I don't think they have the confidence in are we able to contain or even really go to battle with Embiid in the post. I don't think they have that type of mentality or that type of confidence. So uh, I think it's showing, and, you know, I think they like their chances better against Orlando. But I don't necessarily or, feel that Orlando is a team Orlando they can just is, beat. Yeah, That's Orlando ain't sweet. <laughs> Man, it ain't, Orlando it ain't, is far from sweet, sweet, brother. Mm, they not sweet. sweet. But it's two young yeah. teams trying to find yep. their way. I think this is actually going to be a really, really good fucking series. So I'm, I'm still excited about it. Two team, mm -hmm. two young teams trying to figure it out, trying to get to that next step, make that next jump, and you know, becoming a, a, a championship caliber team. So uh, it will be an exciting series. But I, I'm with Stack. I, I just can't agree with that m mindset or mentality going into the playoffs. So while we're on Cleveland, I mean, obviously it's about who's hot at the right time. Cleveland heading into the playoffs is four and six in their last 10. And then Orlando's five and five. So they're playing similar basketball. But mm -hmm. when I think about Cleveland, I think 
there's there's going to be a move this summer if they don't make a move, if they don't make a run. Um, I think they're kind of stuck in the Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. Can these small guards work together? They haven't been able to, although Garland's been hurt uh, a lot. These guys just haven't been able to put it together. So I think if they don't make a move, which I, I mean, if they don't make a run, which I don't really think they will, I think Donovan Mitchell's gone. I, I think the Absolutely. writing's are already on the wall that he's out of there. Um, also, another thing I want to touch on real quick, too. Um, both these uh, shit, Phillies won eight straight, eight and two in their last 10, and then Miami seven and three in their last 10. So both these lower seeds are hungry and going to be scary, uh, particularly, you know, that second seed. But then also you look at Milwaukee, and, and I just read some this morning that Giannis is, is, is doing everything he can to rehab his calf, but calves are tricky. Especially this late in the season, tricky, the bro. calves are really and as yeah. as 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 much as he used his stride and his athleticism and his length. If Giannis Scary. isn't healthy, they're gone in the first round. And, and it can and, all, and that calf strain can always lead to worse. If if you know what I mean, Achilles. so so you have to you have to be have to protect that very sensitive with this injury, bro. This isn't and something you can just rush back from. Kevin KD, Durant's calf strain turned into KD, an Achilles. KD calf strain turned into an Achilles, and, and and like I said, Giannis is one of these guys that needs to be fully healthy on his lower half to, to get going. So you look at that 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 uh, that Indy Milwaukee, uh, and, and 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 Indy's playing good basketball right now. These young guys are hungry, Pascal and these boys and and Halliburton. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, one thing Mike Greenberg said too, we, as we switch to the Western Conference, he said the Lakers should rest LeBron James and Anthony Davis to tank. First, the Pelicans. The winner of that plays Denver. And then they figure the Lakers would win between. They, they, they think the Lakers are going to beat Sacramento or Golden State to get that eight seed and play Oklahoma City. So, again, strategic, scared, thoughts. What do you guys think about that? How do you, how, 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 how is that even an option to even think about when you're talking about you have the, so say, best player of all time and you're going to tank with him? Like that don't, that don't even sound right. That like the, the people who some people just need to shut up, bro. That's just frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them why you mad, son. Yeah, Boogie, what you think? Dog. But I, but but on the flip side, Jack, can the Laker? I mean, I, I, if I'm trying to make a run, they know bronze windows closing. We all know bronze windows closing. If I'm trying to make a run, I'm definitely not trying to see Denver in the first round. I would rather see one of them other two young teams in the first round if I possibly could. We didn't want to see Dallas in the first round either, but we did. No, I thought we did want to see Dallas. No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, nobody wants to play the one seed, bro. Nobody. No, but somebody, Denver, Denver, in, this, in, this, in this instance, Denver's they do the want to play the one oh, seed. Okay, C is the one seed. So okay, well, people but, aren't tripping off the one seed. Well, my, they're my, tripping my, off the two seed. But my point is, regardless who the team, one or two, you playing Denver, it, it don't matter. This is the playoffs. You got to go through. You got to play three rounds regardless. You know what I'm saying? And try to and try to pick your team. You, I just don't like that. Suit up whoever whoever one and two. I mean one and eight. Y'all play. I don't give a fuck who it is. If we got a chance to get in the playoffs, that's what we need to be worrying about. Not who we playing once we get in. Let's get in first. Then we worry about that shit. That's the attitude. That's how it should be. I feel you on that stack, but at the same time, I feel like you only viewing it from a player's perspective. When you that's all I am. I can never beat them corn balls. I understand. I understand. <laughs> stick, stick. When you think about these coaches, I don't think I don't I don't think every coach is a cornball. We got some former players that's actually been through the trenches and now in in that position. So I can't say every coach is a cornball. Darvin Ham, I don't feel like is a cornball. He's nah, he's, he's not a cornball. He one of those. You know what I mean? So yeah. but that's you, a cornball. When you think of, it is. But when you think about it from their perspective, it's a big difference between having a first round exit and say second or third round exit. You know what I mean? So what's the difference? A couple of dollars? Shit, an extension. Darvin Ham get uh his ass sent out in the first round. And he's on the chopping block. He make it to the third or second round. It's more chance for him to a little more life with the with the Lakers right, so, organization. So I think it's, I think it's championship or bust at LA, man. Well shit, the closer you are, the better, in my opinion. <laughs> True. I agree. I agree. So Man, I think about it from that standpoint too. I think once, I think once you know you start seeing teams do these strategic moves to you know let's lose here or make sure we win here so we can play this team. I don't think that's necessarily a player's mindset. You know what I'm saying? I think so. And we all know how this shit go. We don't make the decisions. We just got to mm -hmm. go out and perform. Yep. At the end of the day, though, 
The coach pulled Cleveland's starting five. Not the, the players didn't say they wanted to come out. The coach did that. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, some things are in control for us and some are not. And I think this is an instance where it's not. I think every player for the most part has that mindset or at least wants to have that mindset going into the playoffs. We top dog. We confident as fuck and we ain't worried about no who in front of us. Playing. We running through a wall on these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. That, I we think got two of players. the best players in the league, and oh, I'm pretty LeBron sure LeBron James don't too. give a fuck who he faced. Bron, right. Bron has seen every type monster in this league since he stepped right. foot in this shit. I don't think he gives a fuck about Denver, bro. But right. at the end of the day, Rob Palenka do, Darvin Ham does, mm-hmm. Jeannie Buss, they care. Mm-hmm. They care. Shit, yeah. I want to make it look like we had a successful season. Mm-hmm. Hey. Let's mm-hmm. hey, let's avoid Denver yeah. first round. We slide it to make the second, it possibly to- see him in the conference finals. It makes sense. Make it till you make it. Go and fake Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we gotta make it. Uh another team that's playing really good basketball right now. Shout out Grayson Allen and his new deal just came across the wire. Ching, he just ching. got a four year just got a four year, seventy million dollar deal. Could be seventy nine with incentives, had a career year, shot the shit out of the ball from the three point line and has been an integral part for this this Phoenix team who's kind of been up and down with Bradley Beal not really playing a lot, you know, uh, in and out. Uh, but Phoenix, over their last 10 to 7 to 3, they had the hardest remaining schedule uh, in the league to close out the season. And they beat the Wolves twice. They beat Denver. They beat the Clippers. They beat the Kings. Phoenix will play Minnesota in this first round. They've dominated uh, over the last two seasons, 6 and 1 versus Minnesota. Are we buying? that Phoenix can get hot at the right time and make a run in this Western Conference playoffs. Only way, only way you're not buying that is if you ain't got no money. <laughs> <laughs> so you're riding. So you don't you, you think they have the depth, Jack, and 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 you know obviously they got the star power up top. You think they have the depth to make a run in the in, in the Western Conference? Man, in the playoffs? When, you, when you got KD and Booker and Bill on a team like that, dog, I like my chances going to the playoffs against anybody. They can get hot. You see they're getting hot right now, and they're getting hot at the right time. You want to play like this going into the playoffs, right? You just gave old boy the money. Now you got another player on the team happy. I'm telling you, bro, if, if you want to worry about entertainment in the playoffs like we're talking about Miami, you better worry about KD and Booker. Boogie, you agree? Uh, I do. Uh, I, on paper, I think they got the talent. They ob- yeah. obviously have the personnel. They got legendary players on the team. Uh, You know, one solid Hall of Famer and KD, two guys potentially. I think Book will be one. Bill, we'll see what happens. Potentially another Hall of Famer. So on paper, they got that. But, uh, you know, this has been a very inconsistent team all year. They just yeah, now true. kind of found their stride. Um, you know, I've heard rumblings where it's not as, you know, peachy and clean over there as you think. Um, and for the most part, the big three that they have aren't really on the same page. So uh, mm. I've, I've gotten that information, but, you know, Maybe they they play good basketball down the stretch. Maybe they have found that chemistry. Maybe they have, you know, finally sat down and got on the same page. And I think it would be the right time going into the playoffs. So, uh, like I said, this team has been very inconsistent. Minnesota ain't no hoe. Um, no. Cat will be returning for the playoffs. So, that's, that's a plus for Minnesota. And uh, I think that young team is hungry. I'm a huge fan of Anthony Edwards. I, he, he got that dog mentality that, you know, Stack yeah, has spoke about. Matt, you play with him myself. Mm-hmm. I, he's that mm-hmm. old school style type of player, mm-hmm. which I which I enjoy to watch. So uh, mm-hmm. I don't think you know Minnesota is a pushover or a hoe. So uh, this would be a great series. I love the yeah. Jay McDaniel's KD matchup. Yeah, it's a six eleven offensive force against a six eleven defensive dynamite. So I, this is going to be great for TV, great for the sport. And uh, I think these guys are gonna really go out there and battle. You got a shit a big shit talking and Edwards. You got a bit shit talking about Devin Booker. KD can get in that mode as well. So, shit, the last game they got a little chippy between Bill and, and, and Elvis. So, I think this is going to be a good series. It's going to be a lot of fireworks. And uh, I think at the end of the day, the best team will win. Matt, let me ask you a question, Matt. Do you think when they asked KD during the season uh, what his future looked like in Phoenix, he said, oh, I'm not sure. You think that started up some shit? Uh it could. It couldn't have. I mean, you look at his track record. He's not. He's someone who's not scared to make a move. Right. So I think you know. I, I, I think he, he, him, and LeBron are, are very strategic as far as not you know promising the world. You know, I'm not guaranteeing shit. 
Let's get through the <laughs> season and see and see and see, and see what happens. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, you know, it, it, they've had success against Minnesota. Minnesota is one of these younger teams still trying to find their identity. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless, second round, you're going to see them boys from Colorado. So um, I could see, I, I could definitely see this being a great series, as you said, Boog. I, I can see Phoenix coming out of it, but the bus could stop in that second round because, you know, I just think this Denver team has been playing their role. They haven't been too high. They haven't been too low. They haven't been really worried about their seed. And they found themselves with the first, the, the tied for the first best record in the uh, in, in the Western Conference. So they've kind of, they're saving everything for now. So uh, they are the defending champs. So, you know, I, I love this first round matchup of Minnesota and, and Phoenix for everything you said, Boogie. Um, but I, I think the train is going to stop for both these teams in the second round. Uh, moving on, we want to hand out some flowers, uh, first and foremost to our brother, Russell Westbrook, um, just for what he's been able to do, man, someone of his caliber. And it's not easy, you know, Boogie, you are a superstar, um, to, to, to humble yourself and, and buy into something at the end of a hall of fame career. When everyone said this dude is stubborn, he can't do this. He can't do that. Uh, you know, Stephen A. Smith said, this is the beginning of the end. I think uh, that fat that fat fuck what's his name uh, Jason Whitlock called Shitlock. him the A yeah Jason Shitlock called him uh, called uh, Russ the A B of the of the NBA the, the Antonio Brown of the NBA so just a lot of disrespect has gone out to Russ but all he's done is made the Clippers better they're forty five and twenty three when he's on the court six and eight without him um, although he has career lows and in, in statistical categories I think that's obviously just just due to opportunity him buying in and then the minutes you know he's also got career low in minutes but you know still explosive still a double digit score someone that can explode in the playoffs he always plays well so um, thoughts on just Russ and, and and the way he's been able to kind of buy in and and, and recreate himself and 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 still be very effective coming off the bench for the Clippers well for me um I think Russ's impact on any team is way bigger than, you know, just what he does on the floor. It, it's, it's been well documented that Russ is one of the best leaders to, to, to be in the league and actually lead teams. We saw what he did when, you know, Kevin Durant left OKC. We saw how he led that organization, to, and they still found ways to find success. We saw how he reacted to that with the MVP season. So this is who Russ is. He, he's a natural-born leader. He's He's a positive energy on any team and uh, I think that energy that that he brings to the team is just contagious it 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 puts batteries in everybody's back so uh and it's evident with how you know the clip once once Russ went down the Clippers they started struggling they start they could they became very inconsistent so uh I think Russ just his presence alone uplifts any team and um you know that's just credit to him that's that's Mm -hmm. like I said that's that's a sign of a natural born leader and uh, he's shown it time and time again. And before, real quick, Jack, I I, I want to say too, I just don't think his uh, he's eleven five and five. The numbers don't represent his full impact, as you said, book. It, it's it's a leadership, it's a mentorship, it's the he gives people the juice that I think sometimes they don't have that they need from Russ because you know Russ is a ball of energy, and we all know that energy is contagious. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I just think having him around is big. But uh, Jack, thoughts? I know you're a big fan of Russ. You've been actually in contact with him, trying to get him on the show. But uh, give him his flowers, bro. Man, you you know I'm a big time Russ fan, and just think about that. You add five, you give him two more minutes a game. That's fifteen five and five. That's six man of the year. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you just just think about that. Fifteen five and five off the bench, bro. That's crazy. That's that's not nothing that every bench player is doing. You got bench players that come off the bench and finish games, Matt. Play the whole four quarters, and they don't finish with fifteen five and five. So as an average off the bench, that's impressive to me. Um, but just, but not not only what you're talking about, Matt. The fact that he can just switch it to become a, coming off the bench and still be a professional. But just knowing that you have more in the tank, just knowing that you're over there watching guys that you better than, just knowing that you're going in the Hall of Fame for for, for some. You might not be the player that you was when you came to the league, but you can still go out there and be a better player than eighty uh, percent of the guys in the league right now. Just knowing that. And still be able to go out there and 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 put your pride aside and go out there when you a player like Russell Westbrook, all time uh, triple double leader. Like it's crazy to be that person, and and to to put yourself all of a sudden as a bench player coming off the bench not being respected. 
I was never that athlete. I was never Russell Westbrook, not even close. But I couldn't get – I didn't want to come out the game and being disrespected because I felt like I was better than niggas out there. So, for Russ, man, I, I give him all the flowers in the world, all the respect in the world, and I guarantee you, Matt, I, and, I, and I say this with confidence, 90 to 99% of the people that play basketball in the NBA or in the NBA respect Russ the same way we do. Oh, they, no just, they, they just might not say it. No question. No, I agree 100%. And, and, and really happy for him. Yep. Uh, again, the Clippers have kind of been my pick. Uh, at the very beginning of the season, I'm still kind of hanging my hat on them. If they can get hot at the right time, I would love to see Russ and and and, and James and and Kawhi and PG and them boys, T. Lou, the homie, you know, see them see them do something. So hey, 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 hey! One more thing to give Russ his flowers. AI hey, couldn't do it. Yeah, facts. He couldn't. He couldn't coming off the bench. wasn't for Chuck. AI hey, couldn't I, do it. I respect it. And I respect it. But that first round matchup of, of, of Boogie, that first round matchup Clippers with the Clippers and Dallas, Ooh. Kyrie, Kyrie and Luca are on the right page at the right time, getting yes, hot. The role players are playing well. This is going to be, this, this is going to be, it's going to be live, baby. It's going to be live. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, one last, this is more of kind of just on the mental side. Uh, you know, salute young fella Kai Jones, who, you know, went through some, you know, so, so some mental health issues was cut by the Hornets um, two years after being the 19th overall pick. Um, you know, we kind of saw him lose it uh, uh, online. And, uh, you know, I reached out to him. We went back and forth a little bit on the DMs, but happy to see that the Clippers picked him up, signed him to a multi-year deal. And he was very thankful of the MBPA to reaching out, helping him off the court and kind of getting his ducks in order. Uh, he was going, able to get into therapy twice a week and and, and kind of clear his head. I got a chance to see him play in the summer. And although you don't really judge talent in the summer league, you could, or, or, or you don't judge numbers in the summer league, some of the shit this kid was doing, man, man. it was in super freak athlete. It's definitely going to be able to help the Clippers. And I just think more than anything, fuck the basketball side. I'm glad he was able to get back on track as, as a young man and, you know, continuing this journey uh, because, you know, that, that this NBA is a blessing to be able to play in. And, you know, once, once it's gone, it's gone. So I'm, I was glad he was able to, you know, get back on his feet and, and get back in the league. Shout out to the MBPA, man, for uh, for oh, helping yeah. him out too. Because I've seen so many situations where guys go through a little submit and ain't no help there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When the, the media portray a kid a certain way then people feel like they just back up because they've already downplayed him. But shout out to the MEPA for not letting this kid fall to the wayside being uh, and not waste his talent. Salute to them. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a bit confused as to how this – and outside of him, you know, having, you know, his health – his mental health issues, what mm -hmm. exactly did he do to get cut? Was it because he was on social media? Yeah, I never really no, understood the situation. the situation. Like, what exactly was the crime he did to get – to the point where he just got released and cut. I think I think the things he was talking about as far as the team and uh like I don't think it, it was worth it for him to get cut. They could have suspended him for a game or fined him for the like things he was saying about the team. Yeah, demeaning the team, but it, you right, Boogie, it was not worth it being cut. No. Yeah, I, I never understood. I'm like, damn, really like what did he fail a drug test or like what was it that you know what? We done with him. Like it's too much. And mm -hmm. I never really understood. <laughs> But let's be honest, man. Getting getting cut by Charlotte could be a blessing in disguise because you know ain't no action going on out there. So he's out of here and in LA, make, hopefully. And it doesn't make sense for Charlotte either. You already struggle nope. to get talent, like mm -hmm. you know he's what I mean. I, why not help him go through that hard time? He's mm -hmm. a talented young kid. He's, he's mm -hmm. full of potential. Why not help him get through that time so you can I, keep what yeah. you drafted at home? Like y'all y'all helped y'all helped y'all y'all stood by the other kid that had the trouble and brought him back. Uh, oh, Bridges. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all stood by yeah. him. Mm, I agree. And his was I way agree. more severe. I mean, <laughs> way oh. more severe. Yeah, Not even I, in the I, same I, classroom. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I, don't no, know. I agree. That, 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 didn't, that never really made sense for me. So Yeah. Well, glad he's back on track and best of luck for him uh, moving forward. Moving on to one of our, our, our brothers from another mother, Chet Holgren, man, for, Ooh. you know, being a top pick two years ago, missing his whole first year, and then coming back this year and playing 82 games. 82 games. Obviously, he had a great run. It's been overshadowed by Wimby's greatness, and I'm sure everyone is in agreement that Wimby will win Rookie of the Year. But, you know, for Holmgren to come back uh, his first year and put up 16-7, 
two and a half blocks a game. One of only four rookies since 2000 to have those numbers. Wemby being the other, Embiid and Pal Gasola the other two. But you know this guy is an integral part of that team. One of the main reasons why they're sitting up in that one seed. It just really happy for them. And 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 a little piece of history. OKC is the youngest number one seed Ever. in NBA history. Do you guys see as great as the season's been? They got their feet wet now. You know, obviously SGA is in the MVP conversation. I don't know if he'll get it, but he he very well should win he it. Uh, he very well should win it. Um, can you see them making noise in this Western Conference? The only reason I can't, Matt, because the game slowed down in the playoffs, and and I think when the game slowed down, that benefits the shit out of Shy. He you already can't speed him up. You know what I'm saying? The game slowed down. I think I think he's one of the smartest uh, basketball players at taking advantage of each possession when he got the ball. So I think that's going to benefit them. They definitely can make some noise being at home. All the playoffs, they're a young team, so being at home is going to benefit them. Uh, and then they, you, you're more confident at home being this your first playoff. So I love it. I, th I think they can make some noise. Not saying they're going to win it, but they got a good chance. I think they got a great chance as well. I mean, that's a one thing that stands out to me the most about this young team is just the chemistry and the way they enjoy being teammates. And they look like they really fuck with each other. But that not to can't cut you go out. unnoticed, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, that right. type of chemistry can take you so fucking far in the playoffs, bro. Right. Like, that closeness, that togetherness can really, you know, elevate this team to a new height. And it kind of reminds me of that young OKC team mm -hmm. with Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Russ. Yeah, they had that yeah. same type vibe. You know what I mean? So, uh I think Chet's a big part of that. Um, mm -hmm. I, shit, I could potentially, as of right now, you could say he's the third best player on that team. Mm -hmm. Long term, I could potentially see him being a one or two on that team. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I think he's got that much talent. And I still don't think he necessarily has found no. his game. As of Absolutely right now, not. he's fitting in, Chet? he's playing a role. Talking about Chet? Which is great. Chet, yes. Yeah, no, yeah. No, he's I still, still don't no. think he's necessarily found his game. Like, found he's his still strength. wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, I think that yeah. kid is full of potential. Um, as great as Wimby is, I think this kid can be just as great. And it's just mm -hmm. a matter of time. I really like Chet. And I think obviously Wimby's greatness, what he's been able to do kind of overshadow what Chet's been doing. But Chet's was neck and neck. Absolutely. He's been having a great year uh, this young. And I don't want to knock either, either of these, whether it be OKC or Minnesota, who both had great years. I just have to see it. I have yeah. to see it in the I playoffs because these are young teams. And we all know that veteran – Veteran experience always kind of is 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 the trump card when it comes to the playoffs. But yeah, I mean OKC behind Shea and this young crew, and so, but sometimes on the flip side, being young and dumb, and I don't mean dumb in a bad way. You don't really know what you're supposed to do or not. You just start going out there and playing hard basketball. So Absolutely. sometimes being young can work in your favor because you're not worried about history, you're not worried about shit, but getting out there and hooping. So or I'm mistakes. excited to see. Yeah, but also on the flip side, you think about it, fellas. If it is. They do play the Lakers or they do play a, a Golden State in the first round. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that maybe not against Golden State, but I think if it's a 1-8 matchup with OKC and the Lakers, it'll be it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. So Absolutely. I'm excited to see what this, you know, with, with these plans get started, but, you know, what comes out of it because there's two, two of the top three teams in the Western Conference are young, very talented, but young. And the, the, the two teams that are trying to get – so the where they're at are experienced teams with Hall of Famers on them. So I think it's going to be really interesting. I don't care who the Lakers play in the first round. I don't see Braun getting beat out the first round, dog. I don't give a fuck who they mm. play. Dog. I just can't see it. Not the first round. Bro, bro, he ain't trying to deal with that. He ain't, he, he ain't. Nah, I just don't see Braun letting himself go out the first round. I don't give a fuck how old he is. He's still better than all them motherfuckers. <laughs> Dude, this, this motherfucker's burnt out. Uh, <laughs> as we, you know, as you bring up Bron, we wanted to, 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 you know, year 21. I mean, we look back on the year that LeBron James has had 25.7 points a game, 8.3 assists a game, 7.3 uh, rebounds a game. At 90? Uh, at, at, at how old is he, 50? <laughs> Yeah, this 50. dude is this dude is about to you know is about to be forty years old at the end of this year if I'm not mistaken, uh, man. Just salute year twenty one, and I and I wish we had these comparisons because I saw them a few a few weeks back of guys in their twenty first year and what they averaged. It was ugly. It wasn't even close. I think LeBron yeah, averages yeah. more than all them put together. <laughs> so salute to the king. Uh, what he's been able to do. He just had a monster triple double the other day. Um, but I agree with you, Jack. Uh, if the Lakers get in, which I think they will, I don't see Braun going out in that first round. 
I just don't. Unless they play Denver. And you know, <laughs> so. you know, you know, you know what my body told me when I was forty. When I turned forty on my fortieth birthday. Mm-hmm. Don't you start tripping. <laughs> 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 Don't you? Yeah. Motherfucker, you nigga, over. It's over, nigga. It's over, right? Yeah. It's over, nigga. Yeah. For everybody but him. Everybody Bro but is him. still doing it. Bro is still doing it at the highest level. Right. So, man, before we get out of here, hip hop is back. Hip hop is back. I feel like hip hop's been struggling for a while. And this is all due respect to the younger you know, these younger artists, but these old heads started making it competitive again. And 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 Drake versus everyone has kind of taken over uh, our airwaves the past couple weeks. So Kendrick threw the first shot. Uh, Cole threw a shot, said it was the lamest shit he ever did and apologized. That was lame. Drake came back versus everybody and did his thing. Obviously, Metro and Future did their thing. The weekend jumped on. Even John Morant jumped on because I guess they was fucking with the same chick. ASAP Rocky, uh, sit your ass down somewhere. Nobody want to hear no bars from you, bro. <laughs> sit down, brother. Best thing ever happened to you was Rihanna. Stop it. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> Metro threw a beat back at him yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw it. Metro came back with a fire beat. That's really all Metro could do because he ain't going to get on there and talk no shit. But I liked Ross's shit. I'm not going to lie to you. Ross has a way of putting words together and melodies together and just making it, whether the diss track or not, making shit a great song, but I don't know. Did you guys hear Kendrick's this morning? Kendrick came back with some more shit this morning. I don't know if y'all heard. They said that was AI. Oh, they said it was AI? That they wasn't said, real? They said AI. Drake shit was AI too, but this is my thing though, Matt. As a black man, when somebody call you a white boy, <laughs> it, I, it can't get no worse than that. Uh, it's tough out here for us, us half breeds. I've been called white boy before, and I wanted to fight. So it'd be tough out here for us, <laughs> for us, us, us cross breeds out here. They'd be calling us white boys when when Ross did that shit. But you saw Drake. You know Drake being as petty as Drake is. He shared his little shit with his mom. Yeah, uh, shared the story with his mom. But I love where it's at right now. And if it could just stay competitive and stay here, facts, I think facts. this shit is bringing life to the game. You got yeah, these guys with their competitive juices. They back and forth at each other. And you could talk all the shit you want and, and slay the second shit you want. But if it if it stays here, I think it's good for music. Obviously, if it spills over and, and shit starts happening, because everyone always wants to prove how tough they are. Now, if it, if it gets to that, I'm not a fan of it. But if it could stay here, if it stays on wax back and forth, I think it's good for yeah. the game. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I, somebody need to make a song that I'm not tough, bro. I just want to rap. I think I need to make that. <laughs> I'm not tough either. You know, I, 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 people just want to make hear good music. I don't want to see none of them niggas fight. I don't want to no. see none of their crews fight. But I do want to see them compete and rap. I like it. Yes. I like yes. it. But it's always one dude that's not rapping, that don't have nothing to do with it, that's part of the clique, that want uh, to make, uh, make himself famous and do some dumb shit. It's never the rappers. It's always yeah. the hang-alongs. That's true. That's yeah, true. But I mean, I piggyback off both of you guys. I think I think it's great for hip hop. I mean, as a fan of hip hop, this is what I want to see. I think the fact that we got all the top dogs in the game outside of, you know, Jay and, and Ye, we got the top dogs currently in the game right now, all in competition. Like, that's mm -hmm. great for the fans. It's great for music. And like you said, I hope it remains on wax. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think it will because we're, we're dealing with a different caliber of rappers. Uh, these are guys that have been in the game a long time. They understand the ups and downs of the business. They understand competition. They understand how to turn a bad situation into a good one, which I think all these rappers are doing right now. They're going to keep us entertained. They're going to think, they're going to make us think they don't, you know, get along. But I think at the end of the day, they know they're all going to benefit from this situation, which is, you know, a dope thing. So, uh, like I said, keep it on wax and keep this shit going. I want to hear more bars. I want to hear more disses. I want to mm -hmm. keep going. I think it's dope. It's good thing Clap. they all. It's good thing they all three of them got a lot to lose. You ain't dealing. You ain't dealing with a big name rapper and somebody who coming in the game and trying to make a name for itself. The best thing about it are all these rappers at the top. So it should be yeah. just fair rap. Yeah, this this ain't drill music. This real music. So yeah. uh, I'm cool yeah. with it. Absolutely. Who do you got? Do you guys have someone right now winning? Is anybody winning in your guys' eyes right now? Or just hip hop as a whole is winning. Hip hop. Is I think hip hop man. as a whole. Is yeah, winning. Hey, ain't I, 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 ain't, I, ain't, I ain't on none of them niggas squad. I ain't with not down with none of them <laughs> niggas labels. So I ain't finna just <laughs> jump on one of them niggas sides. I'm not in that. They all jamming. Absolutely. What I will I, say I, I is, think it all benefit. 
I got a lot of respect for it because Drake is taking on all these niggas by himself. Ain't nobody, right ain't, 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 ain't ain't nobody, ain't, ain't nobody on Drake's side. Drake is shooting at all the top <laughs> dogs by nigga. himself. So again, I like what Ross said. If if Kendrick shit this morning was real, I like what Kendrick said both times. Obviously, fucking with what Drake said. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of Future and Metro, but I don't know if Future is them kind of like a beef, like a, a beef type. That nigga just makes good music. Nah, so I, I don't know if he's future, like a, a, a beef. Oh uh, yeah, I fuck with Future. Future high, think... bro. I'm on a Future high. Bro. <laughs> hey, Future, Future, yeah. Future, but Future, ain't, Future ain't finna jump out there like that. Yeah. Nah, he gonna keep it player as yeah. always. Yeah. He, he gonna keep it player. Like yeah. Yeah, so again, I agree. I think it's good for hip hop, and I hope it it, it stays competitive and, and keeps it over the airwaves and not in the streets. Before we get out of here, fellas, Haney, Garcia, Stack, what you got for us? Hey, man, shit, I got my brother on here, Boogie, coming into the boxing space too. Uh, uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. You got Ryan Garcia, a social media star, uh, somebody that's shown that he's willing to fight anybody, take all the big fights. And one thing you have to give Ryan props for. You got guys like Devin Haney, who is definitely top two, top three in his class. But Ryan is selling this fight. And it's just, it's just the truth. Oh, okay. Ryan is the big star. Ryan is selling this fight, even though he's not the better boxer. I see Ryan losing this fight. He might get knocked out. You know, um, he has a chance because he got because of those quick hands and, and he's still a big boxer. And he's always confident. But I just respect Ryan for taking the big fights and making the fights that we want to see. Um, Devin Haney. Could be the best in his division. Uh, got the best jab in his division. He's like Floyd. He's locked in. Uh, don't locked don't in. drink. Don't smoke. Uh, you know he's a Muslim, so he he, he prays five times a day. He's super locked into his craft. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, he's somebody that takes boxing real serious, and he don't see anybody taking him off the path he's going to right now. And I agree with I, I agree with. He looks good right now. I see I see him uh, beating Ryan, but it's gonna be a great fight. It's what we want to see. So, like I said, I salute both of these guys for making this fight. What you got, Boogie? I agree with you. Uh, Ryan is definitely selling this fight. He is a social media star. He understands how to, you know, make guys engage, make fans engage with what's going on. He's going a little off the wire with some of the shit. Say, that, that was my question. I mean, is this all? He made a diss record too. too. Right. At this point, I don't even know if the motherfucker is still acting. Like, you know what I mean? It's a lot going on with bro. It's something every day, but it is entertaining. It does, you know, make you want to keep up with the fight and what's going on. But when it comes to Devin Haney, bro, like like you said, his discipline, his his work ethic, his dedication to the sport, his dedication to being great. That's something you don't see a lot in any sport any, anymore. Right. Like a, right. a young kid being dedicated to being great. So I don't think that can go unnoticed. And um, I, I got Haney, uh, simple. I think Haney's just a better boxer all yeah. around. And you can't, like I said, you can't ignore that discipline and that work ethic. So Haney for sure. In honor of 420, our Thursday show will be none other than the legends, Cheech and Chong themselves. Yes, sir. So make sure you guys tune in this Thursday in honor of 420. Cheech and Chong, times all the smoke. Big shout out to Roots of Fight. Uh, we, Jack, we did a, collect, uh, a collab with them. And uh, for a special Jackie Robinson commemorative drop at my alma mater, UCLA, we got a chance to go back on campus, talk to some people. Uh, we just dropped that today. So again, shout out to our brothers at Roots of Fight. You guys yep. make sure you go check that out. You can catch this on All the Smoke Productions YouTube and the DraftKings Network. Appreciate y'all, boys. Safe travels, Boogie. We'll see y'all next week.